Hello and welcome. A question that I got asked after I posted the last video on GPIO and interrupts was what would happen if you're in an interrupt service routine and uh, the interrupt service routine ran really long. The specific question was related to whether processing inside of TinyGo is concurrent or parallel. Uh, concurrent means that you're almost doing two things at the same time, but the processor is really not doing two things at the same time because it's only running on one core. Um, even though the Raspberry Pi Pico has more than one core, it has two cores, uh, TinyGo currently is unable to operate on both those cores. So the only processing that you can get is really um, concurrent processing, which means that the processor basically divvies up its time between different go routines that are running. Um, and sometimes it gives a little bit more time to one of the processes if they're a little greedy. Anyways, um, I thought what we could do is take a look at how an interrupt service routine works and basically try to simulate a long running process uh, within uh, the interrupt service routine to see what the effects are on our program that was running pretty well so far. So let's dive uh, right into uh, what we're trying to do here. Okay, so if you go back to my code, uh, this is almost the same code as I had the last time for my Blink example, except I've made some minor changes. I basically cleaned out all the configuration, uh, moved that into its own function, as you can see. I also made the, uh, the terms LED, LED2 and button as constants, global constants. I hate writing global constants and variables, but you know, at this point, uh, one thing is go basically make sure that these constants are, um, can't be modified uh, by some other context. And so I figured, you know, it's not a bad thing. It also made it easy for me to write some of this code. Um, and so I figured let's just do it this way. Anyway, so I've, I've declared the three pins that we're using as constants. I added in this function called configure. There's literally nothing different about this function other than the fact that I took the statements from the previous um, program and moved them into this function just to make my code a little bit cleaner. And then I defined an interrupt service routine function rather than actually writing it as a anonymous function or as an anonymous function inside of the callback uh, for the uh, set interrupt function. All right, so we basically got the same code, you know, we configure the pins, we set the interrupt service routine or we register the interrupt service routine right here uh, in this thing that says ISR. And then we go in and start uh, blinking uh, the second LED, which is a green LED, um, uh, we blink it once every second. It's on for 500 milliseconds, it's off for 500 milliseconds. So then let's kind of look at, you know, what, what happens here uh, with our uh, interrupt service routine itself. Nothing much has changed with this interrupt service routine. I mean, the, the core is still, is still this, uh, uh, this statement, right, which says LED.set, uh, inverse of p.get, which is fine. This is what we used to do before. Nothing's really changed. But what I've done now is I've actually added a long running process after uh, we do that so that the interrupt service routine is now going to take much longer to run than uh, what it used to before. In the past, all it would do is literally just set that LED and exit. Um, okay, so let's see what really happens when we do something like this, um, you know, what, what, what happens to our program uh, when we have a long running process inside of an interrupt service routine? Something that I basically said we should try to avoid in the last video, uh, but it's something that, you know, that's, that's there right now in our program. So let's see what really happens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go uh, burn this or flash this program to my uh, Pico. Uh, so let's go do that. We click run. We get a, we basically go through and flash it, um, and we are done with flashing it. Uh, we'll just open a terminal for the fun of it. But let's now switch to our um, camera to see what's happening. Okay. So basically, as we expected in the past, our um, <laughs> Our green LED has just been flashing, 
as we always have seen. But now it's going to do something different when I press this button. And let's see what happens. So I press the button. The yellow LED, it used to be a white LED. I kind of didn't like the color, so I switched to a yellow LED. The yellow LED came on for a few seconds and then went off. But you notice it was basically while the yellow LED was on, the green LED stopped blinking. And then once the yellow LED went off, the green LED essentially started blinking. So let's try that again. Let's observe now, okay? So press it, yellow LED is on, green LED stops blinking, and then yellow LED goes off, green LED st starts blinking. What exactly is going on here, right? So, so let's kind of dive back into our code and we'll take a look at what's happening. So if you look at our code, um, what really happens is we get into the interrupt service routine, uh, we set the LED, the yellow LED, so now this is set to the inverse of the button, and so the button went low, so the yellow LED is set high, and so it, start, it switched on. And at this point, we start this long running process that's literally just printing from one to 10,000 to the console, the terminal, the serial monitor. Um, I'm not actually showing you that because I don't think it's really relevant or germane to this discussion. So um, we basically get into this fake long running process. But what you notice is because the interrupt service routine is running in this long running process, this part of the program, which is the blink part of the program for the green LED, you know, the stuff that I'm just highlighting right now, this part of the program actually doesn't run. And so the green LED essentially has stopped blinking. It just is illuminated and it sits there until the interrupt service routine, so this print statement basically finishes, at which point it essentially goes back to uh, running the blink again. Now, there is something else that's going on here that we, it, it, that's very subtle. And what's happening is because when I release the push button, the second interrupt service routine is queued up now. Remember that the interrupt service routine is registered to run on both a pin falling and a pin rising, right? So when we essentially release the push button, what happens is that there is a pin rising interrupt that's fired, but that interrupt never takes effect until the first interrupt service routine is finished. Because this is running concurrently and the scheduler is giving uh, the first interrupt service routine the priority, nothing else runs, so the blink obviously stops running. But then the second interrupt service, or the second call to the interrupt service routine to register the pin rising interrupt doesn't work at all. And so until we basically finish up the first ISR execution, the second ISR execution never happens. And that's what you're really observing here. And that is why what you'll also notice is my yellow LED goes off, at which point the second, this loop, the, the for i equals zero to 10,000 loop runs a second time and then the green LED starts blinking. So let's go back into the camera and let's observe this once again, right? So note what's going on. I press my push button and I release it. Yellow LED comes on, green LED stops blinking, yellow LED is off, and a few seconds later, the green LED starts blinking again. Let's do it again. Okay, so now observe, both LEDs are on. Yellow LED goes off, wait for a few seconds. Now green LED starts flashing. So what's happening is that the second interrupt service routine is now running and that also has the same delay. So the LED goes, the yellow LED goes off, but control has still not passed to uh, the blink part of the application, to the main go routine. And so we're basically held up here waiting for the print to complete before control passes to the main go routine and the green LED starts blinking again, which, which explains the delay between the yellow LED going off and the green LED starting to blink again. So it's kind of an interesting situation here, right? I mean, we've, we're basically in a situation where we've got both, um, you know, both the interrupt service routines firing, but they take control uh, and therefore the main go routine never gets permission to run. All right, so one more slightly, uh, one more subtle thing that I wanna play with, right? And, and see what happens. Okay, so um, a very common 
way of handling interrupt service routines is that when you get into an interrupt service routine, you actually disable all other interrupts. And then when you're done with the interrupt service routine, you enable all interrupts. It's an interesting way to do it. And the reason we do it that way, uh, or the reason we typically follow that pattern, is because we don't want anything else interrupting us while the processor is performing uh, or processing this current interrupt. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I basically ended up doing something crazy. Um, so here, let's go back and let's get that code back in. Okay, so I'm basically going to uncomment this line which if you notice, it sets the callback to nil, which is the way you disable an interrupt service routine inside of uh, TinyGo. So I'm going to unset that, and then, I mean, or I'm going to basically disable interrupt processing or all other interrupts. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to enable interrupts at the end of the interrupt service routine. So essentially what we did was we set the callback to nil in the first line, and then in the last line of that function, we set the callback back to this ISR function. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's give our program a shot again and see what is going on. Um, so I'm sorry, I actually seem to have been on the camera while I was doing all this. So what I wanted to tell you is I took this line, which was actually commented out before, the button dot set interrupt, and it sets the callback to nil uh, as a means of disabling the interrupt service routine. I uncommented that, and then I also uncommented this last line, which sets the interrupt service routine back to the ISR function. That's really the change I've made. So I uncommented the first, uh, this, this line, line 34, and line 44 inside of my program, okay? So let's go back to the camera. And um, you know, before that, let me put the Raspberry Pi Pico into file system mode. Uh, let me go back to the camera and you know, let me let me flash this program to uh, the tiny uh, to the Pico. Okay, so the flashing just completed. Nothing much has changed as far as our green LED is concerned, but now let's observe the fun. All right, so I press my push button. The green LED is steady. It starts blinking after a moment. But if you notice, the yellow LED never goes off. What is going on here? It was going off before. So let's try this again, right? I'm gonna reset everything and let's try it again. Green LED on, yellow LED on. Green LED starts blinking, yellow LED still on. Never goes off. What happened? So what happened is actually all ensconced in this one line. We ended up set, setting all interrupts processing off when we got into our interrupt service routine. And so the push button release interrupt, which is the pin rising interrupt, never got handled. The processor basically ignored it and moved on. And so the yellow LED never turned off. Okay, so. So, so, so how can we get past this, right? There's really no way to get past it in the program, but I did wanna show you some interesting behavior, which is that I'm going to hold the push button down and I'm going to hold it down until the green LED starts blinking again, which indicates that the whole interrupt service routine has finished. And at that point, I'm going to release the push button and let's observe what the behavior is, okay? So I hold it down, and the green LED is basically steady. It started blinking. I'm going to release it. And you notice my yellow LED went off. So exactly what happened here. So I had disabled interrupts, but, the in, but I held the push button down long enough that the first interrupt service routine finished executing. And then when I released the push button, the processor had already been set so that the program had been set so that it would actually enable interrupts processing again. And therefore, when I release the push button after the first ISR is done, I'm able to register the pin rising interrupt and that turns off the LED. So let's play with this just one more time to go over this, all right? So I press the push button, I released it. Well, that was not a, that was a stupid thing to do. 
Okay, let's go back and do this. I press the push button, I keep it held down, yellow LED is on, green LED is steady. Green LED starts blinking, which indicates ISR is completed. I release the push button, and at this point, the, the second interrupt service routine is running, and it should turn off the LED, but it didn't. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so green started blinking, I released it, and the yellow LED is now showing up correctly. And, and that is just an explanation or a discussion of a little more of a deep dive into how interrupts are handled on the Raspberry Pi Pico and TinyGo uh, to answer the question in a very short way, yes, processing is concurrent. And so the processor can really only do one thing at a time. The TinyGo scheduler is what decides what gets executed at a point when there is an interrupt service routine that takes a long time to run, the processor or the processing of any other Go routine actually gets held up because I guess what happens in the scheduler is that it's giving the interrupt service routine the highest priority to run. Anyways, um, I hope that this one, uh, this tutorial was actually kind of valuable to all of you. And so, you know, I still haven't gotten around to the video on concurrency with Go channels, but once I'm done with this, and hopefully sometime in the next week or so, I should be able to create that tutorial and upload it. But for now, thank you for listening. Please subscribe to my channel. Please go to my website. Uh, all the links are in, my, um, in the description below as well as my GitHub uh, site. Take a look at stuff, subscribe to the channel, interact here and post your own comments. And I look forward to any feedback that you have. I look forward to comments, discussions, uh, etc. Or if someone feels that what I said was incorrect, I would love to learn more about what I said that was wrong uh, so that I can correct my understanding for the future as well. Thank you very much.